There's some guy in the doorway there. And the cops came rolling up. This is 15016 and unit 15012. And that's the same doorway that I got. Okay, uh, and we're all on the same now. page because um, I'm, I'm going to be, uh, I don't know how you guys want to divide this, but basically me and Ben are all working with this board and we decided to go to the end because we all... The guy on the right, right made the call. Now, he wasn't We're talking that loudly right? into the phone. As soon as I got here and I started uh, filming them in the doorway, all of a sudden he tripled his volume and started shouting into the phones. Now he's not on the same call he made to the police. But he didn't call dispatch. He called someone named Ernesto. That was six or seven minutes before they arrived. And when you see him get up, he comes over and stands right next to me. Continue shouting into the phone. He's in there laying down and he's yelling at everybody who's passing by. He was obviously deliberately trying to stop me from hearing or recording any of the conversation between the cops and the guy and trying to make sure my narrative couldn't be heard and he was successful which is why you see this freeze frame because I cut out about 30 seconds of the uh, video because you couldn't hear anything except his phone conversation now we'll pick it up again from where he walked away so you could hear. Yes, for New Year's. So uh, the cop gave me a look, but he never said a word. They did exactly what they were supposed to do. About his being there. There they go. No trespass warning. They just told him to leave and he did. And if he hadn't, they should have arrested him for trespassing rather than a warning or anything. This is the problem that I had with Lamoka that time. He's supposed to tell me to leave and then arrest me if I didn't, not ID me and give me a trespass warning like he did and tell me I'd be arrested if he didn't, uh, if I didn't produce the ID. These guys handle that properly. Once they arrive, the problem is with the way they got there. Because dispatch will have no record of a call. That's the big problem with this department. Now, I don't know if a G4S called Lamoka on me, like just happened here, or if Lamoka just saw me there and took it up on his own. 
But either way, the big problem in, with this department is that most of the time when they're harassing somebody for being in a public place where they're supposed to be allowed to be, it's because somebody has the cell phone number for a police officer and they call him directly rather than calling the dispatcher like the G4S guy did here. Or I'm assuming the guy was G4S because he was dressed in all black and that's the uniform they're using today. That's what happened when the doorman at Harats called and got me illegally trespassed from the sidewalk in front of Burger Fi. And that's what happened when Major Dilatori got me in the park because Herbert Hoffner called his cell phone and had Palacios come up and illegally search me and plant the crack pipe on me so they could trespass me from the park. I'll put the link in the description to the Burger Fi video and to the Lamoca video. Unfortunately, there is no video of the incident in the park. None of them had body cams on. Well, that's it for this one. I'm out of here. This is Miami Beach Audits. Remember to like, share, and subscribe, and hit that bell notification. I'll see you all on the next one.